Ah, uh, welcome, welcome, my friends, to another edition of more bad news. Brought to you as always by Camel Cigarettes. Take the Camel's Challenge, smoke Camels for thirty days, and see for yourself what a difference Camels can make in your life. You know, friends, I've noticed a growing sense of anxiety out there. Some of you are worried that our coming extinction will not be pleasant. Here at the show, we don't sell hope, but we do sell a product that can definitely help. If you're feeling anxiety, take the Camel's Challenge and see what a pack of camels a day can do for your anxieties. Well, friend, it's been another week of very bad news. Just this morning, we read that Iran launched hundreds of missiles and drones against Israel and that the US, Britain, and Jordan had to join in and shoot them down. Israel vows retaliation and Iran threatens escalation. After 190 days, there is no end in sight. For Jews around the world, the, res the respite that we had after the Holocaust is now officially over. The new reality is faced by Jewish students on college campuses everywhere. Being Jewish is going to become increasingly uncomfortable as calls for a final solution grow louder. Last week, uh, Peter Higgs, the physicist known for the boson that bears his name, died. While working with Gar Allen in 1979, we got a handwritten letter from Peter, which I still have in my archives, regarding a eugenicist that we were following. It, has long, it was long before the boson which bears his name uh, became the God particle, uh, which brought him a Nobel Prize in 2013. Peter commented that the fame ruined his life. The Economist reported that he always made clear that he was one of many scientists working on similar ideas at the time before everything needed to be reduced to sound bites and science to the search for a holy grail. I'm sure that Peter did not appreciate the comment in nature that his role and influence in our understanding of the universe will be remembered for millennia. And last week I got a fundraising letter from one of my favorite charities, the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, reminding me that we are facing the largest refugee crisis in human history, more than 110 million people forcibly displaced worldwide. For the most part, refugees lived in homes just like you and I. I like to think of my donation as a down payment on my accommodations at the relief center. Last week, the teenage son of a very sweet family, uh, friends of mine, posted on Facebook uh, a meme of an ammo clip. Uh, and above the meme, it said, the only way. And on the shells were written, cure for pedophilia. Normally, I don't comment on such things, but I love his parents. And I remarked that a nun that I know who works with pedophiles in prison told me that they were all victims. Every one of them had been molested as a child. The boy responded that that's no excuse. I left it there, but only later it occurred to me that the delusional MAGA types, all Democrats are pedophiles. So what I missed about the meme was that it was actually calling for the assassination of Democrats. According to the PBS NewsHour poll last week, one in five US adults believe that Americans may have to resort to violence in order to get their country back on track. An attitude that experts say uh, puts the nation at quote, an incredibly dangerous place in the months before the 2024 election. In Rwanda, the Tutsis were called cockroaches. In America, the Democrats are called pedophiles. So uh, we also learned last week from the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists that a quarter of US cows are grazing on toxic grass that is spreading because of climate change. According to the report, a quarter of the nation's cows, more than 15 million in all, graze on toxic grass. The animals lose their hooves, parts of their tails, their tips of their ears slough off. The disorder called fescue toxosis costs the livestock industry over $2 billion a year in lost production. Fescue to toxicity is the most devastating livestock disorder east of the Mississippi. It's much the same with the chickens. Vox News reports that for every egg-laying hen born into uh, today's factory farming system, a male chick is killed or culled, and more than six billion of them are culled worldwide every year. The brutality of our factory farming system reflects the brutality of our civilization. 
it's not just people who are suffering. And what is most distressing is that most of the suffering is intentionally inflicted by a doomed civilization that cares for nothing for the enormous suffering it imposes on completely innocent creatures. I no longer like to speculate about the future because we have no control over what is coming. Our fate is sealed. There is no wiggling around this. We are going extinct and most humans will die of starvation, others of violence, suicide, disease. That's all you need to know about the future. Delusional thinking is widespread, but for those who don't want to imagine that we have millennia before us, thinking about this election is really foolish. If I were a rich man, I would sit and study the holy books all day. I would focus my thoughts on understanding the universe of which I am a part. And as it turns out, I'm rich enough for that. So next week, stay safe. And if I'm not completely overwhelmed with Pesach preparation, I'll be back with another edition of more bad news.